Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at our new script, 3D Precompose. If you use After Effects for motion graphics or visual effects, at some point, you've had to pre-compose some layers. And pre-composing is basically taking multiple layers and put them inside of their own separate composition. And ideally, it would look exactly the same. It would just simply be inside of a separate comp. But here's the problem. Anytime you use a 3D aware effect like particular or element or even just a 3D layer, when you pre-compose it using After Effects, so I'll go down here to pre-compose, which is just at the bottom, I'm gonna move all the attributes and hit OK. And now those particles are all messed up. And the reason they're messed up is if I open it up, the lights and camera are all missing from this composition. So if we come back over here, we've got cameras and lights, and I can take these and I can copy them, and I can paste them. But sometimes that's a little bit of a hassle to do, especially when you have a lot of lights and you have a lot of different things going on. So this is basically the problem, is that when you pre-compose a 3D aware effect, it does not look exactly the same. So that's why we created the 3D pre-compose script. So you can download it, it's free, throw it into your script folder, or you can just run it at any point. And here's how it works. You select a layer or multiple layers and you choose file, script, and we're gonna run it here, but you can also run the script and select it. And we'll click it. All right, so here it is. I can change the name of the comp. I can choose to include the camera and the lights inside of the pre-comp. And I can also automatically link the properties of the camera or the properties of the lights. Now, keep in mind when you use expressions and link them from comp to comp, it can slow things down a little bit, so only link it up if you need them. And then there's also an option to leave an existing copy of the selected layer. So I'm gonna link the camera, and I'm gonna hit OK. So you can see it looks exactly the same, and I've got both copies still on, so I'll just shut off the original copy and now all we have is the pre-comped version of the particular. So the effects are no longer editable in this comp, but if I open it up by double clicking, it has all of its effects. So if we come back here, we turn that off, we can take the orbit tool and we can actually move around the scene. So all of the expressions on the camera are now linked back up to the main composition. All right, so what exactly is it good for? Well. I put together a couple of different examples, but I'm sure you guys will have plenty of ideas on what you could use it for in your own projects. All right, so here's a really simple example. So I've got these cool particles here, and I've got my camera's depth of field on. And this makes a really cool effect, but it also makes it hard to keep my title in focus. So what I could do is I could select my title and pre-compose it with the 3D pre-compose script, turn off the lights, and link the properties of the camera. Then we hit OK, and now we can shut off our title in this comp. So if we move our camera around, everything is working the same, but this layer is rendering inside of a pre-comp. So now if we open up that pre-comp, go to the camera, hit AA, go down to the depth of field, and right now it's linked back up to the original camera. But what we can do is unlink it and then turn it off. And so now if we go back to the comp, everything is working in sync. Now, the other cool thing I can do is I could have a totally different lighting setup. So I could create a point light, blue, hit OK, Let's See, move this, uh, and, uh, and that looks really nice. So this is a really simple example of what's possible. We've got another really cool example here. So in this case, we've got a 3D displacement map. So you can see the distortion here is coming from a displacement effect. You can see right here. And it's also three-dimensional. So you can see that it actually updates as the camera moves around. So that can be really helpful when you're trying to uh, dial in some uh, procedural effects. Okay, so here's how easy this is. So I've got a layer with some radio waves and I've got a fast blur. The layer is also set to a 3D layer and so now we can move it around uh, as such. So what I wanna do is use this 
as a displacement map. But the displacement effect requires you to pre-compose it first. So we'll take the layer, the rings layer, we'll choose File, Script, 3D Pre-Compose, and we'll link just the camera and the properties, and we'll call this uh, Rings Displacement Map, and hit OK. So we can shut that off, and now we're going to create an adjustment layer. And we'll put this below our muzzle flash. And then we'll come over here and we'll type in displace and grab the displacement map effect, drop it onto that adjustment layer. And we're going to select the rings displacement map precomp. So now if I increase the value here, you can see that we're getting that distortion based on that particular effect. So we can shut that off and we can see just the distortion. And uh, you know that looks really nice and check this out. If I take my camera tool, it moves around like it's three dimensional. Here's another great example. You want to do some lens flares and obscure them behind a 3D layer like Element 3D. Well, I've got my lens flare here and uh, moving it around but it's not going behind my jet here. So I'll take the element layer, we'll choose scripts pre-compose, and we'll call this element 3D matte. And for this, I just need the camera and to link the property since we're just gonna be using the alpha channel. And I'll hit okay. We'll turn that layer off. Then go to the lens flare effect, we're using optical flares, and we'll set a foreground layer. So if we set the element 3D matte, now if we take that light, it'll actually blink out behind the alpha, but more so is that if the camera moves, the camera will actually force it to go behind. So right there, very, very cool effect. There's another cool example here to kind of create like an invisibility effect using Element 3D. So the way it works is if you have a 3D object and what you can do is go to the output and set it to normals and this creates a normal map and then we can pre-compose it and uh, we'll include the camera, link the properties, we'll call it E3D normal map, hit OK and we can shut both these off and then we'll take an adjustment layer Take the displacement map effect, select the normal map, and just increase the value here, or decrease. And the other thing we could do is if we open it up, we can add an adjustment layer and maybe add a fast blur, and that'll just soften the map so that it's, uh, it's not as sharp, so depending on what the effect is that you're going for. But uh, yeah, it's a nice, uh, nice kind of invisibility effect. Other things that you could do with it, taking a collection of, uh, of layers. So here, we've got these layers that represent the muzzle flash, right? Well, let's say I want to take all of them, pre-compose them. So we'll do uh, pre-compose, link just the camera, and maybe we won't even leave an existing copy. Um, and we'll hit OK. And now I'm going to take this and maybe colorize it all as one. So we'll set it to tint and we'll take another free video copilot plugin, color vibrance, throw that out there, maybe do a uh, blue or something like that, set this to screen and uh, now I'm color correcting all of those layers at once and maintaining all of the 3D properties of that effect. All right, well, a lot of cool things you can do with it. I'm sure you guys are thinking some other great stuff as well. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'm Andrew Kramer, and we will see you next time.